Mikhail, thanks for speaking to us in what is an unprecedented time for so many people. How do you feel about what's been happening and what's your message to our fans across the world? Well, uh, we are living in a unique situation. So I think all of us, we are trying to react to the situation that are coming on a daily basis and trying our best uh, to overcome the situation. First of all, I would like to send a message uh, to all the people that have lost uh, their loved ones, the ones that are suffering in hospitals, having difficult moments that are sick, and as well a massive gratitude for everybody that is uh, involved healthcare, people in hospitals, people with services, people trying to provide food, transportation, everything that is so relevant for us and pleased to everybody. Um, we are a little bit behind other countries, for example, in Spain, where I know the situation that are living at the moment. And while we are having the opportunity to minimize a little bit the risk, I encourage everybody, please, to be responsible and stay at home as much as possible. That's all we can do from our position. We don't have the, the ability to, to help others in, in other circumstances. Please, at least stay at home and do what is required. You know, we have to try to help the NHS as much as possible. And we have to give the opportunity to the elder people who need this more than anybody else to be able to get the treatment that required. So we have to slow the process down, the virus down, so please stay at home. Now, we know you've not been well. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling completely recovered. Um, it's true, I started having some symptoms uh, when we got the phone call from the club uh, to let us know that uh, we might be uh, exposed to the virus uh, because the owner of Olympiacos, and on that moment, I don't know, I felt something within me that uh, I had it. And uh, we had a game the following day against Manchester City. So I made a decision, I called the doctor straight away, and uh, I asked him to drive home. I spoke with Raul, Vina, with Edu, with Hash, and uh, we set up a meeting together. And I said, listen, we have a couple of players that they've been exposed. There is a massive risk there, and as well, I'm the first one that uh, I'm feeling the symptoms, very clear symptoms. So if that's the case, obviously, all the players and all the people related to the club that are in contact with me on a daily basis are exposed. So we cannot make that decision. We have to speak with the Premier League, we have to speak to Manchester City, and uh, we have to make the decision pretty quickly. It's incredible how quickly it happened if you go back two weeks to when you were diagnosed. It feels like more than two weeks, really. That week did start, as you say, with the Man City preparation, the press conference. It changed dramatically. Absolutely. And then, uh, obviously, all the news we had, it was from China, then it was Italy, then a little bit of Spain. And myself, I had it at home, you know. And then you realise, wow, everybody can be exposed here. This is very serious, you know. And you start to think about the people that you've been in contact with and the other people that can be related to us. And uh, that's where a little bit of fear comes. In terms of symptoms, it was a normal virus for me. I had three or four a little bit difficult days, a little bit of temperature, some dry cough, um, and some discomfort in my pain, in my chest, sorry. And, uh, and that was it. And uh, yeah, the difficulty is I have people at home. I have three kids as well, and I was worried. My missus has been through it and my nanny has been through it. And thanks God, the kids never got it. And we are all completely fine now. What did self-isolation mean for you? What kind of precautions did you have to take at home? All that I could. Uh, I set up a room and a bathroom. I was there by myself for two or three days. But after the second day, my missus started to feel some symptoms as well. So probably it was too late because uh, by the time that the symptoms arise, already the virus was contagious to, to other people. So we could not prevent it in our home. I think it was too late by the time we had the positive test as well. We were reacting, and now that's why I insist. Instead of reacting, we have the, the chance now to stay at home and prevent a lot of situations, and we have to do it. With everyone now at home, following those strict government guidelines, how is the club actually operating now? Well, I'm, I'm really impressed and um, I feel proud uh, 
for where I am now because in difficult moments is when do you really see the people, how they react, how they think, how they prioritize things. And uh, all the phone calls I'm having with all the members of the boards, uh, all my technical staff, all the coaching staff, all the players, how aware and how encouraged they all are to try to help, to try to be on board of the situation, to try to make things easier for the club. It's been amazing. And uh, to be fair, I have to say that I'm very privileged to work with these, with these people. And communication such a major part of your job, of course, Mikel, and, and that involves daily contact with the coaches, with the players, among others. How are they getting on, the coaches and the, and the players, right now? Well, there are different aspects that uh, we have to try to maintain. You know, the one is health is the most important one for sure. So just try to make everything and cover all the necessities players, staff and employees need to try to sustain the club with healthy people. That's the first one. That's our responsibility. The second one with players is the physical aspect. They all have programs. They all have individual work to do that they are really doing it and, and really trying to maintain themselves prepared for when we have to get back playing. And the third one is the mind. So there is the psychological support that they need that we are giving them. And as well, I'm giving them a lot of homework to do because uh, I've been reviewing everything that uh, we've been doing since I joined, the things that we have to try to maintain doing, improve and develop. And individually, I have to say they are really enjoying the challenge. So we might get a few coaches after this virus and or at least a few players that can or are willing to start on that path because I think that they are really enjoying the process. It seems like a lot longer than four months since you took over as head coach. So much has happened, but you do have those four months of data and analytics to work with. So as well as sharing that homework with the players, what are you able to work on? Well, first of all, it's a great opportunity for me to try to get to know the people better, you know, and I was talking before about the senior people at the club, but as well, uh, my own coaching staff, the people that I were related on a daily basis. And then the communication with the players, you know, now I'm at home, they are not sitting next to me. We can open conversations in a different way. I think the overall worldwide situation is affecting them and is, is make them feel more human and more vulnerable as well. And, um, and they feel pretty relaxed talking about anything that we have to do. So I'm taking that opportunity as well to share, you know, different um, conversations with them that, uh, in my opinion, they've been really useful. One of the problems, this pretty universal problem for whether you're a fan, a head coach, a player, whoever, it's filling that time when you're not working at home. What, what have you been doing with all that downtime? Well, I have three kids <laughs> with a lot of energy. They are 10, 7 and 4, so you can imagine. So as well, I'm taking, I am a very positive person. I try to take the moment to say, okay, what can we take from this? What's the lesson here? What's the opportunity here for us? For 17 years, I haven't had the chance to wake up with my kids, and spend a lot of time, dedicate time, listen to them, you know, do homework with them, you know. And the same with my missus. So this is a great opportunity. There's no excuses. We are in, in the household together, you know, and we are really enjoying those moments as well. You know, my kids, yeah, they miss the social aspect. Yes, they do. But at the same time, if you ask them, that's a unique opportunity in their lives to be with their parents on their own and have all the attention that they need. So in that sense, you know, emotionally, I feel very fulfilled because I'm giving and I'm receiving something that I'm not used to it. And yeah, it's a great opportunity for us to do that. Similar story for the players, I suppose. When you make that kind of a sacrifice, you travel that much to have this time is uh, one of maybe is, is maybe the, the silver lining to a very big cloud. Absolutely. And I think we are all realizing how much we need each other, you know, and we are in a world where yeah, everything is social media, everything is a WhatsApp text. How important is touching each other, you know, feeling each other and hugging each other. You know, I miss that a lot with a lot of people that that I love and I cannot do it now. And I'm sure that will transform a little bit uh, how people behave with the close one, with the people that they love, that they care about. You know, we have to be emotionally more open. We have to tell each other what we are feeling because straight away, you know, 
it's one virus that is putting the world aside, you know, and it's transforming everything that we prioritize in life. So we have to take that lesson. We cannot just in two or three months time, if we are able to get over this quickly, forget about this because it's so important. We can't finish, Mikhail, without mentioning that today is your birthday, of course. Happy birthday. Uh, it's one you'll remember for very different reasons. For sure. But as I said, yeah, all, all the people that I love has been in contact and they've been trying to speak to me. And hope, <laughs> thanks God we have the technology to do what we're doing at the moment to be able to communicate with people. I have my kids. I have my, my wife here with me. They've been really caring and um, it's what it is. You know, I'm very lucky to have everything that I have in my life. And uh, I'm feeling now very sorry. And, and I would love to be able to help more to those that are suffering in these moments. Mikhail, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much.